Ever found yourself in the situation where you want to test learners on, on their ability to identify a correct sequence or an order of steps in something, you know, like uh, assembling a product or conducting a scientific experiment or maybe even just following a recipe? Well, you know drag and drops obviously are the way to go, but you want to provide detailed feedback for each drag item after it's dropped along the way. So you want the learners to pause and reflect and understand why their choices, their drop choices were correct or incorrect or mostly incorrect, right? It's probably where you want to provide most of the feedback. Well, here's the kicker. By default, drag and drop questions only provide feedback for, for the entire interaction. It's either all correct or incorrect. And uh, most of the time, you know, that's good enough for what you're doing. But what if, what if you want to take it a step further? What if you want to, or you need to provide specific feedback for, for each item so your learners can truly grasp the, the nuances of, of, their, of their choices? So it might seem a little like a head scratcher at first, but uh, trust me, it's easier than you think. So take a look at the screen I'm using here. Look at the screen. I'm using a content library template. So let me preview this real quick. You can see we have 10 drag items and seven targets, but we're asked to put these in order. So I'm just gonna preview this real quick, walk through it, right? So we have the steps and we can drag anyone at any point. So we're not getting any feedback specifically for each of these steps. Now we could add some drop correct and drop incorrect states for this type of interaction. That would make sense here but we want to provide more feedback than just that visual feedback. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click escape and I'm just going to duplicate this slide. So this will be the start slide, um, uh, duplicate it, right click duplicate. And then let's just call this one original. I should update the title. Awesome. Okay. So this is our first one. So what we want to do and not have to add a lot of triggers or any variables here, we're going to keep this really simple. I'm going to remove the try again feedback. I think that doesn't make sense here because we're going to provide feedback on each choice. So what we'll do is we'll come to the design tab and I'm just going to change the attempts right here from two to one. So that gets rid of that, that try again layer. Bye bye. But what I want to do is disable each of these remaining drop targets. I just want to ask the learner where, what is the first step of this process? So I don't want to ask about the second and third and the other steps. So I'm going to select each of these and I'm just going to gray them out. I want to make them make these more obvious that they're not active targets. So what color is this? If I use format, where is that coming from? Do I see that? Can't be a cuss. Oh, there it is. So it's right down there. So let's just do this. I'll select that shape and I'm going to grab home, double click format painter, and I'm just going to select each of these real quick. Okay. So they're still active, actually. Um, a couple things I could do. I could delete them, right? Remove the target altogether, but I want to keep it. So I'm going to pop into form view and I'm just going to remove the, the, the available targets. So they're not, I'm just going to remove them. So they're not even an option. So I'll say none, none. And so what will happen here is if the learner tries to drop one of those drag objects on top of the rectangle, it's going to treat it like anything else or, or nothing else, meaning there's no active target there. I just want to focus on that first target. So go back to slide view and there we have it. So preview the slide now. And so all of my drag items are still available, right? Cause they were part of the original interaction, but these targets down here are not. So I could choose step one, step, you know, any one of these and then click submit and then, okay, I got it correct. But let's say I got it incorrect. Here's where I can provide more specific feedback. So maybe, maybe we don't call this incorrect. We, we change the text in here, but we're going to provide hints or clues to the learner to guide them in recognizing what that first step of the process was. Now you could still use the attempts, right? We could have multiple attempts, in which case it, if we use the multiple attempts, <laughs> okay, that's funny. That is old. That we should be try again, but look at that, that, that old. I haven't seen that in a long time, but there's a try again. So you could use a try again and we could maybe make this a little bit more informative or helpful for, to the learner to help guide them. And then ultimately, if they still get it wrong, they go and correct and then they jump to the next slide. So here's how, here's how that process is going to work. So this would be step one, right? So we could just say, oh, one, step one, what's the first step? 
And then I'm going to duplicate this. So I'm going to duplicate this, this interaction, say duplicate. And with that duplicated, then we'll just call this 102. And now I just need to make the updates in the color changes here. So I'm going to select the first one, which is the, the white color. So we can say home, grab that format painter, and then click on that one. Now, a couple things we could do to make this indicate that this is no longer an option. I like the idea of showing what that step one is. So I could, I could copy the formatting from step one and then just format paint that first one and then call it step one or whatever the actual title would be, right? And then we could take something like step one and we want to um, disable it or, or fade it out or something, right? So we could say right click, format, and we'll just dial up that uh, transparency. Let's see what 50 looks like. Uh, maybe, maybe 80. Okay. Right. So now it's, it's, it's disabled or at least it's looking disabled. And then we'll say, make that just a darker text, something like that. And then what I also need to do is remove this step now from the viable targets. So we have a couple things to do back here in form view. First up is we need to make, remove the drop target from step one and then make step two the next drop target. And then we also want to remove this item from a draggable item because the learners already identified what that first step is. So in form view, let's first remove step one as a, as a drag item. So I'm going to come down and just choose none. And then what we'll do for the target is make that now number two rectangle. So that's or actually that's none. And then step two goes to the drop target of two, right? So we just need to make sure these two are aligned. Go back to slide view. And I think that's all we have to do. Let's preview this one and see how that one works. So we're still using the try again. I, I would probably just see this one's no longer available. All of these are still available and we just make those choices and figure out what's the correct step. We click okay. Now we get our feedback or our try again. We click it again. And then this would be the actual incorrect that we could then provide. So it seems like a simple solution, right? We don't have to have a bunch of triggers. We just duplicate the slide. And if you're, if you're guiding the learner to getting the correct answer, by the time you get to the last slide, which would be the seventh slide, the seventh practice activity, you could use that one as the, as the interaction that gets passed to the, that gets passed to the LMS because they can't make it this far until they've answered those steps, those steps correctly. Or maybe you have this as a guided activity and then you go back to the original Maybe you make that one the last one, and that's the final one that they have to do on their own without, without any of that guidance. So there you have it, my friends, a simple yet powerful way to enhance drag and drop interactions by, by just spacing out the steps to encourage your learners to slow down, reflect on their choices, and, and provide some more meaningful feedback for either the correct or the incorrect steps in, in the process.